everyone, and let's begin uh, by a quick look into Inspire Directive, which was the starting point for uh, for the creation of our uh, GIS portal. The directive on establishing an infrastructure for spatial information uh, came into force in 2007, and its full implementation is required by 2019. And the directive is all about sharing the various sets of data. Um, that are to f uh, facilitate uh, land use management and uh, it is about interoper interoperability, uh, the compatibility of the data. What is important for us here is that the National Heritage Board of Poland is responsible for the theme of protected archaeological and cultural sites uh, in Poland, of course. Uh, the Inspire came uh, uh, came to us in uh, 2000 and, uh, 2010, and it was a real revolution because we were used to limiting access to our archaeological archives to archaeologists, including archaeology students, to spatial planners, and to landowners. And then we had to face the dreadful vision of uh, unlimited online access, and the lim limitations were due were. Um, because of heritage protection, because in Poland we have uh, probably more than 50,000 of detectories that are, uh, uh, the uh, major and majority of them is uh, searching for archaeological objects illegally uh, and uh, taking them and uh, selling them, which is also illegal in Poland. Uh, uh, but regardless of the fact that our arguments uh, were and still are valid, uh, the limitations of access to the archives were kind of a tradition without uh, any legal backup. Uh, so we uh, could not, um, uh, could not uh, hold on to it. And uh, uh, in my personal opinion, it is also impossible to create a civil society when the state tre treats uh, citizens like uh, potential criminals, so uh, that's why the access to the data is needed. Uh, we had to, in the beginning, we had to decide what to share in Poland according to the Act on the Protection and Guardianship of Monuments. We have several forms of legal protection. Uh, we have Register of Monuments, which is a list of most precious objects and sites. Uh, we have Monuments of History, which is a sort of the best of the best. Uh, the Monuments of History are appointed by the President of, po by the President of Poland. We've got uh, cultural parks. Uh, these are the areas in which uh, there are some mitigations in uh, land use and in building activity, depending on uh, what features are protected. And uh, uh, protection can also be set in local spatial development plans and various administrative decisions, such as uh, decisions on road, railroad, uh, public airport construction, on land use uh, mm -hmm. conditions, on location of public purpose uh, investments. And for the Inspire, we chose the first two because we keep the records of all registered monuments and all monuments of history. And we added UNESCO World Heritage Sites. And how does it look in numbers? We have almost 8,000 archaeological sites in the register. We have more than 70,000 of uh, other monuments, such as archaeological uh, um, architectural monuments and parks and gardens or historic uh, uh, urban, urban layouts and, and such. We've got 60 monuments of history at the mon mo moment and 14 UNESCO World Heritage Sites and the National Heritage Board of Poland is responsible for 13 of them. The 14th is uh, Białowieża Forest, which is in charge of the Ministry of Environment. Uh, for archaeology, uh, almost 8,000 sites is less than 2% of uh, all registers, uh, all recorded sites in Poland. The sites are uh, recorded uh, in the project of Polish archaeological records, and um, the total, total number of the sites is uh, 455,000. Uh, and the, these sites are either visible on the surface because of their physical form or because of uh, archaeological objects on the surface or are known uh, through archaeological research. Uh, let's take a closer look uh, to, uh, at the National Register of Monuments. The first entry was made in 1929. 
Uh, it is a work of several generation of, generations of heritage inspectors uh, that worked uh, under changing laws and changing administrative division of the country. And they were using uh, different criteria for assessing the value of monuments. And um, unfortunately, we still do not have any national guidelines uh, or strategies concerning the register. So it's up to a uh, regional uh, heritage inspector to decide if a site uh, deserves to be inscribed in the register. Uh, the graph shows a uh, number of entries per, mm, per decades, and you can see that most of uh, sites were, were inscribed in the register in 1960s um, and 1970s, and it was the, the funny time that uh, when with the central planning uh, in economy we had norms for everything, and so uh, and also the heritage inspectors <coughs> had to meet the numbers. And that is why 30% uh, of the sites uh, inscribed in 1960s and 1970s were entered in the register in December, and some of them in the short period be, uh, between Christmas and the New Year's Eve, because uh, there was um, there was numbers that had, had to be met <coughs> by the inspectors. Uh, coming back to to the Inspire, they were two basic premises underlying our project. Uh, the Inspire uh, sort of forced us to digitize according to very precise demands, and we were to present, uh, at the time we were on, to present only the register, uh, but we uh, wanted to adjust the results to our needs, uh, which meant that we had to do more than the Inspire. And we wanted to prepare tools for eventual presentation of the entire record. The, um, uh, 455,000 uh, archaeological sites, and we kept uh, kept the two in mind during all the stages of the project, during cre creating the data model, preparing the thesauri, uh, during the digitization process, and working out the IT solutions. Uh, the data model has uh, in its center, of course, the general in information required by the Inspire, but he here I call it the Inspire Plus, because we added some uh, country specific information uh, and of course we uh, and of course we have um, several um, uh, embedded tables of attributes for geometry for documentation for settlement phases of the sites and a uh, function and uh, for field verification of the register uh, the general information apart from the obligatory inspire attributes contains uh, for example our national forms of designation which are monuments of history and all the numbers for um, Polish archaeological records uh, geometry is of course obligatory in the inspire but we adjusted it to uh, to the archive we had we decided to use compound geometry with po points lines and polygons because uh, generally there, there are several um, issues uh, uh, regarding the location of the sites. First one uh, are descriptive locations, uh, which, uh, for example, can be like medieval settlement located in the western part of the village on a field on the northern slope of the field over the railroad 100 meters north of it, or site located by the road. 700 meters east of the last building in the village. If a decision is from 1960s or 1970s, it really is lucky guess to point at the last buildings of the village. Another one is uh, the use of funny names. I translated some for you and uh, so that we, we can share a laugh. And we laughed at first, but then we realized that the funny names sometimes were the main locator of the site. For example, site located on the fields of Stephanie Gatz and Mary Tutsi between their houses, north of the road in the eastern part of the village. It, it's just one example, but it seems as if the heritage inspector used uh, the names because they felt it would be uh, almost impossible to forget where Louis the King had lived in the uh, 1960s. And sometimes we had maps, so so-called maps, and let's see what happened. Uh, sites can be marked by axes, and we really do not know. The axes vary in size, and we really do not know if the site is in the center or if the uh, entire area of the site is covered by an X. Uh, 
Sometimes cadastral plan may be used, but we do not really know what is protected because uh, what is marked on the map is only the number of the plot. Sometimes the limits of protections are marked, but, uh, uh, but the description here is uh, about one barrow located somewhere in the middle of the plot, and the entire plot is protected, and the entire uh, plot has some limitations of land use and, and such. Uh, sometimes, uh, 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 sometimes one site is uh, inscribed in the register with two separate decisions and has got two separate numbers because it is located on a separate uh, <coughs> land plots. Uh, and uh, sometimes the decision it, uh, was wrong from the start, because here you can see a sketch uh, of a protected agricultural plot, and below, um, in our portal, you see the same plot and uh, uh, the polygon below marks the actual location of a barrow. And this is one of my favorite examples. This is the Ovieja Forest, my, one of my favorites because I was the one to verify if it was digitized uh, correctly. Uh, all the uh, <coughs> polygons here <coughs> mark uh, early medieval barrows, so we might think that we have uh, one large burial ground, one site, but no, we have 26 of them. And uh, they had to be put in the GIS on the basis of sketches like this. So again, lucky guesses and riddles. And sometimes, if we, uh, if we were lucky, uh, the barrows were visible on topographic maps, but, uh, but not always. Uh, the documentation is connected to our data acquisition tool, which is called Scan Manager. It allowed us to um, uh, to uh, assign, assign and sometimes clarify some location information to scan documents, so uh, so that afterwards, when uh, when the, the location of the site was put into the GIS, uh, we could easily uh, connect the documentation with the site. And it is now used also for the retrieval of uh, archival documentation. Three okay. Uh, um, we uh, also had to create a thesauri for settlement phases and functions. Mm -hmm. We decided that actual terminology must, archaeological terminology must uh, come first, uh, which meant that inspired general function was ascribed to specific entries after the creation of the thesauri. And the problem was that the terminology encompassed almost 90 years of archaeology, and the terms were sometimes obsolete, sometimes were biased, um, especially in the times where um, size being Slavic or pre-Slavic was their main value. Sometimes the terms were imprecise, and of course we had a continuous development of science with cultures degraded to groups uh, or promoted to techno-complexes, groups promoted to cultures, etc. We created three major uh, hierarchical thesauri for culture, for specific function and chronology. And because there could be no exclusion of obsolete terms and no valuation of coexisting system of classification, because we wanted the database to reflect the archive, not to discuss it, uh, we uh, have in the thesauri um, parallel systems of classifications, just like for the Bronze Age. We've got Bronze Age 1 to 5, A to D, and early, older, middle younger and late Bronze Age. And we uh, have a place in the database for field verification of the register, pr project ongoing since uh, 2010. We are visiting all uh, registered sites and checking if the decisions are correct and checking the state of preservation. Um, data visual visualization according to the Inspire. And here we... Uh, in our geoportal, because we decided that after so much work we had to do, we want something that uh, looks better than gray dots. <coughs> we came up with a system of icons for uh, for um, major types of uh, monuments and sites. Here you can see examples for archaeology, and the colors are used to mark uh, chronology. Uh, the sites are visible. Um, uh, we use aggregation in our 
Map portal, the sites are aggregated to administrative units, to voivodships, to provinces, to, to, to communes, and they can be marked by symbols or by colors. Uh, we wanted to create a sort of a digital archaeological atlas. This is why, up to the very last uh, stage, icons appear by the names of villages, and at the very last point, aggregation stops and they jump to their actual position. Uh, we use various map backgrounds, topographic maps, open layer map, uh, aerial photos, uh, and the results of LiDAR scanning, because we had a project of um, IT system of country protection against extreme threats in which almost the entire area of Poland was, <coughs> was laser scanned. Uh, what, uh, what were the challenges on the way? We, we had to find uh, the common ground and the common language, not only with, uh, with uh, our colleagues dealing with architecture and parks and gardens, but also with the GIS team, which was not easy at times. We had to introduce the zero-one thinking and make some drastic decisions like choosing the leading chronology and function for the sake of visualization. And we had to <coughs> accept the state of our archive and the fact that the, uh, and the portal reflects the state of the register, uh, the state of what is being protected and not the state of knowledge. And we also had to fill the gaps because it, we found out that over the years some decisions are missing. Uh, and also there was an issue of time and money lack of them, uh, which means that we still have a lot uh, to do for the future. We have to complete the database with the field verification data, we have to digitize the entire record, and we obviously need more levels of access because um, regardless of the fact that our portal looks nice, we are still at the Inspire level one. Um, we need to share the full version of our tools with heritage inspectors. We need to introduce the system of editing and verification of new data so that they can put new information online. Uh, we have to, if you want to um, make documents downloadable, we have to mask personal data in, the, uh, in all the documents. And there's also, um, it is also a chance to create tools for social interaction so that the people could uh, tell us uh, about threats to heritage. And there is, of course, an, an ongoing issue of sustainability, data preservation, and, for example, periodical review of the Thesaur, because uh, archaeology um, keeps developing all the time, which means that uh, the, this project will always be an ongoing one. Thank you very much. Thank you.